Doctor. I want to talk about Arena Pharmaceuticals. One of the top performing drug companies around lately. Shares are up now more than 140 percent in the past year, and it rallies strongly today. Investors betting on a promising pipeline that includes big advances in the treatment of lung disease and a non-opioid painkiller. CEO Amit Munchi joins us now in a Power Lunch exclusive. Amit, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me on. Part of your company's transformation and part of the reason why the stock is up so sharply is I think most people think of you still as the weight loss drug company, and that you shed that completely. Belvic is a thing of the past. Absolutely. So we divested our Belvic obligations to our commercial partner and really began to focus on the pipeline about a year ago. Yeah, and, and investors were really excited about the positive phase two data that you had uh, most recently for your drug that treats ulcerative colitis. Um, you're going to embark on phase three. What can you tell us about when those readouts will still come and what we should be expecting from them. So the normal process is we'll take all that data, we'll get to the FDA, and we'll have a, a good dialogue with the agency around our phase three plans, and then we'll come back and start talking about the phase three plans going forward. So that drug, etrazomod, I believe it is, is in the same class as Celgene's Ozanimod, which it acquired a few years ago for about $7 billion when it bought Receptos. How are you looking at how those two drugs compare and I have some more questions for you about that uh, valuation comparison as well. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So we, um, the way we've thought about it hard is, is we have a cleaner molecule top to bottom. So when you're looking at efficacy, we've shown stronger efficacy. When we look at safety, we've shown a better safety profile. We believe we've just got a cleaner compound all the way around compared to Ozanamod. When you look at a deal that Celgene did for Receptos, and of course they did have a bit of a setback at the FDA recently with the refusal to file letter on that molecule and a different indication, uh, how are you looking at the future of Arena by itself? I mean, do you see a potential deal for that kind of money? Well, we try not to think about M&A or any sort of deal premiums. We're really focused on building a great company. We've got two great assets, mm -hmm. Rolindopeg coming out of phase two in PAH or pulmonary arterial hypertension, and then again now a trazomod in UC. So we've had two wins in the last year, and we're planning to build a company around that. In terms of the UC drug, some analysts are forecasting that you can get 20 percent of the patient market right now. Is that where you see this drug could be? Well, it's hard to tell now. Uh -huh. We have to get through the phase three trials. Right. We'll have to see what happens with uh, Ozanamod. They've had, as you pointed out, some recent setbacks. Uh, so that'll change the competitive landscape over time. Um, we know this market, uh, the combined two markets between PAH and ulcerative colitis exceed $30 billion. So there's plenty of room to play. And um, again, best in class assets always, uh, always get a leg up. Well, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Well, the competitor that you would be facing in the pulmonary arterial hypertension world is, of course, Johnson & Johnson, which acquired Actelion for $30 billion last year, one of the biggest biotech deals we've seen in a while. I understand that one of the advantages your molecule could have is once daily dosing versus twice daily. Um, how do you look at that potential competitive advantage? How much does it matter? So one of the most important things about that compound is... Um, we have a 24-hour half-life compared to the j, j compound, which has about an eight-hour half-life. We also have about seven and a half to ten-fold improvement in potency, and that translated in phase two to unprecedented data in a contemporary patient population. So physicians, clinicians, our investigators are incredibly excited, and um, we really look forward to bringing that uh, product forward for patients. It's a, it's a grievous illness. You've got another drug in the pipeline, APD371, um, which is designed to treat some of the pains associated with Crohn's disease, just to put it extremely simply. A lot of analysts, when they're coming up with the valuation for your company, they don't even have that in their model. How should people think about that? It's entering phase two, I believe, somewhere along those lines? Yeah, correct. It's actually in it's phase two. two in phase quarter, right? We expect data okay. this quarter, exactly. So, Is um, it wrong to not include it in the, in the valuation assessment well, of your company? Just like you've never seen a, a big pharma CEO say that things are undervalued, you know, we're, we're never <laughs> properly valued. So uh, in this case... Um, APD371 does not get a lot of attention, um, but it's an exciting compound. It's a non-opioid product. Um, it's peripherally restricted, does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So it's not addictive, and basically. Non that's what we believe yeah. at this point. And importantly, uh, it's, it's, it, it could be used in a series of GI conditions, so Crohn's pain, IBS pain. So it's only one application. It's, there are many potentially in the absolutely. pipeline. Absolutely. So are, are analysts underestimating this then? Well, it's, it, we just, there's been so much potential? happening in the company over the last year. Um, I think we've given the analysts all they can handle in terms of positive news readouts. <laughs> all right. Amit, thank you for joining us. Appreciate thank you very much for having me Amit on. Amit Munchi, the CEO of Arena Pharmaceuticals.